I think I was at the front desk one day and um, a man came up to the front desk and he um, inquired on how he could get a cochlear implant for his son. And upon talking to him, we found out that his brother had a child um, who lived in Sudan and hadn't um, been able to get a cochlear implant. He was born with meningitis. Everything was normal. He was hearing, he was everything. And they gave him a medication and was wrong. So he lost his hearing and it was so sad for us. He just uh, unfortunately uh, went through like medical problems when he in, just got born and, uh, and uh, it was so difficult for, for the family over there. Yeah, my uh, brother and his wife, they went through a very difficult time, very rough. I told him that donations were very difficult to get but the easiest way would be to write to one of the companies and ask them for the donated device. I said that UCLA probably would be more than happy to do a donation. So I gave him some emails and um, unbeknownst to me he continued to call all the companies and I got an email from Cochlear Corporation um, asking if we truly would donate our services and if so they were willing to donate the cochlear implant for the family. So we tried to just bring them here and do the implant for him and he, so he can hear. So it was, it was a decision between me and my husband to bring them here because we, we are very, like we have a daughter, so we just put that in our daughter, you know what I mean? Like we just feel their feelings. We met Dr. Wisconsin, he was so nice and he welcomed us here, uh, here in uh, St. Vincent uh, Hospital and he explained everything for us, the procedure and everything. He took from his time and he did that for him and I don't know, just thank him. The surgery was like a miracle because thank God it was succeed by the way and hopefully the second step is going to be succeed too. Today, actually, they're gonna uh, start to make adjustment for the device, uh, the cochlear, and also he's gonna be hearing for the first time. So excited today! Today, they're gonna open the voice for him, and we can't wait to see the reaction. And hopefully, he's gonna be okay with that. We're just kind of looking to see if we get any sort of responses. Oh, I got it too. Oh, my it's crying. Oh, my okay, I'm going to turn it off. And so when we put the processor on him, he started to cry, which is often what we see because they're hearing for the first time. They're hearing something that they've not heard before, and it can be kind of scary. So sometimes we get tears of happiness, and sometimes we get tears that are more because they're scared and they're not sure what they're hearing. And we started to actually see some responses um, to like maracas and noisemakers. He started to kind of like look around and um, we're still at a very soft level. So tomorrow they'll return and we will remap the cochlear implant, the processor, and um, increase the levels that he's hearing at. And we'll do that over the next month to try to get him to the target of, of where we want him to be. We got uh, the surgery for Ramadan and just, you know, I just even thought, I was talking to my, myself when I came here, like, wow, it's, it's like a dream came through, you know. Um, I'm so happy, you know, for Omar. Cochlear implants are, it's an incredible technology. We're very fortunate. Um, to work very closely with some of the best surgeons in the world next door with Dr. Wilkinson and Dr. Dr. Luxford um, and the whole team over there and um, the just the fact that they uh, donated their time to this family I think it was a really great uh, bringing together of Cochlear Corporation, the House Clinic and UCLA to really um, provide something that might possibly change the life of a child.